Okay, to get started with our backsplash, we're going to do the X, Y, and Z three-point datum. We're going to use that to change the working plane to that wall. Right now, it's presently, the working plane is parallel to the floor, and we're going to make the working plane against that wall. And to do that, we use a starting point along the X axis. a direction point along the x-axis, and a y position up on the wall. And now you can see our datum processing was completed successfully. The wall is now our working surface for our geometries. And as previously noted, we've already marked a perimeter, and I'm just going to begin shooting that. Okay, we're going to go into the countertop mode, and we're going to shoot clockwise. Two points per edge. And just like in countertops, we want to make sure that there's a sharp enough angle between the different directions of the surface of the perimeter, uh, more than a five degree difference. Coming along underneath. This is the arbitrary line coming down from the outer edge of the cabinet. We're going to come off the cabinet top to create the wall. The mark on the wall behind uh, the cabinets will make a substitute. We'll have to add an extra one and a quarter inches to cover our countertop. And we'll do that using dynamic editing once we make the template. Along the cabinet tops. And now we've got a complete perimeter for a backsplash, and I'm going to hit the Enter key. Now you'll notice that it creates an overhang, so I mark the cabinets. Uh, let me go over here to the wall. I mark the cabinets two inches down, and then I created an overhang that went back one sixteenth of an inch less, so that I've got a one sixteenth inch perimeter all around the all around the outside edges. Now I want that along the top. I don't want it on the side. I want the side to actually be right along the cabinet, which is the line that I shot. So I'm going to go into dynamic editing. I'm going to click on this edge. And rather than having the overhang be enough to leave me that eighth of an inch, or sixteenth of an inch, depending on what you prefer, I'm going to set this to zero. And I'm going to set this side, the overhang, to zero. And all that does is it puts this line right back where it was. So before it had pushed out, like I, I wanted it to push out here and here because it's going against the surface, it needs some clearance. But here I really didn't want it pushed out, so I just used dynamic editing to bring it back directly in line. And then here I'm going to bring this up one and a quarter inches. Or since I went out two, I'm going to only push it down three quarters of an inch. That'll leave me an inch and a quarter for my countertop. So we'll go again in dynamic editing. We'll go down to the bottom. This finished edge. And the overhang here, I only want to be 0.75. So that creates my perimeter drawing 
giving me an eighth or a sixteenth, depending on how you set your settings for the overhang, clearance around the cabinet itself, direct straight lines down from this edge of the cabinet, and enough clearance here for uh, my uh, countertop. Now, if you'll notice on the wall, I also have a light switch underneath both of the long cabinets. So I'm going to go into my two points to make a rectangle. I'm going to shoot one end of this rectangle. And the other opposite corner. And you'll notice on the screen now it makes a cutout for that switch. And I'm going to go over to this one. I'm going to do the first corner. And I'm going to do the opposite corner. Shoot that point. And so here's my, my other wall switch. I could do the same with any other kinds of cutouts. If I had a couple of uh, plumbing outlets for some kind of a special sink, I could shoot that point and that point and just note what the circumference is. Or I can shoot three points if there's already a cutout there, three points around the circle, and it'll create the circle on the drawing for the uh, space for the plumbing to come through the backsplash.